welcome back to another video. How are you all doing? Oh, you're gonna hope. So in this video, I just want to talk about the Torque TC500 controller and getting the most out of it, whether that be getting the maximum amount of range or the most amount of power. When I installed the controller in that video, I had a quick look at the settings, but obviously now I've had this for such a long time, I feel that like I've got a good amount of knowledge and I know my way around the app enough to be able to advise on what settings you're going to need to get the desired effect. Now obviously when you get a new upgrade like a controller or a battery, the first thing you're going to want to do is just literally put it as high up as possible just so you can compare what the maximum performance is going to be compared to the stock bike. And with this app it's very easy to do. You simply go through each individual section and just turn it up to max. Now that's absolutely fine, but obviously like I said before that is going to come at a price. Your battery is going to drain very quickly. So in this video I'm just going to go through some of the tips and the techniques that I've found you can still get a huge amount of performance without draining the battery as quick and then i'll also look at the settings to make your battery as efficient as possible without focusing too much on the overall performance so a typical scenario if you're just trying to get from a to b and you're not worried about performance so i'm just going to pull up on the screen at the moment just so you can see exactly what i'm running at and the sort of performance i'm getting so i do have one of the smaller Suron batteries so i've got the 32 amp hour so with regards to my estimated power, I'm only getting about 7.3 kilowatts. Now I say I'm only getting about 7.3 kilowatts, this is still more than double what a stock Suron runs at. You can actually manipulate the app so that you're still getting the same amount of kilowatts, but not draining the battery as fast as it could be. So the settings that you can see on the screen, these are pretty much an average ride when I'm riding out on my own. I've got my set route of say 13 miles. These would be my typical settings. So I've currently got my motor current set of 500 amps now. So that's the maximum that I can physically run the bike at. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run out of 500 amps. We're just going to pin it down this hill. And then what we do is we're going to lower that just so you can see the, the effect that that has on the bike. So most of the settings are up. So I'll just do them all individually just so you can see. So without even pulling up the front wheel, just automatically lifts in the air so the torque is just it's just unbelievable compared to stock it's just night and day so what i'll do next is i'll just turn this down we'll go from 500 we'll turn it down to so we'll turn that down to about 260 i think the lowest is around 60 65 so this is roughly halfway so what i'll do is i'll just pin the throttle again just so you can see the comparison so acceleration much much slower however the top end is about the same so what i would look to do is for maximum performance keep that right up but if i was looking just to conserve a bit of battery it's just lower that motor current so it's massively slowed the acceleration but top ends it will eventually get there from there what we'll do is lower this right down so we're on a bit of an incline here but to pin the throttle at 50 amps it's yeah it's not going uphill at all we'll try and get it downhill obviously pickup is that's full throttle so the pickup is very very slow but eventually we build and build and build and we're going to be getting up to the same sort of speed as we did have what I would say is if you are looking to conserve battery, you're not going to want to go that, you're never going to get anywhere. It's basically just affecting your 0 to 60 time and your torque. So yeah, you, it's going to take you forever and a day just to get anywhere. So, so what I'll do now is just pop this all the way back up to 500 and then we'll go to the motor current. So I'm not going to show you again, as you saw it as I very first started, all the settings were super high. So it's currently set to 120 amps. It goes down to, 30 amps so again we'll go around 60 amps this is about halfway so torque so i'm almost giving you exactly the same output on the torque i can't pop a wheelie but the other thing that this is doing now is if you see at the top we've now gone down to 3.7 kilowatts so my top end is nowhere near what it was so that's basically affecting the torque and top end yeah can't get the wheel up whatsoever so the next thing is going to be is the RPM. 
Now I, have, I again, I always have mine set as high as possible. If I just pull over, I'm just going to set that down, and we'll just set it down to as low as possible. And it's now given me that I'm going to achieve around 11 miles an hour. So <laughs> acceleration is extremely quick, but as we get to 11 miles, that's it. That, that's all it's given me. I can't go any faster than that. That's pinned. So obviously that's how fast your motor's working. So not very fast equals you're not going to go very fast. And the last setting on this page is the field weakening. Now, this one, I'm not going to lie, does scare me a little bit. Again, I'll pull over just to show you what we can put it up to. So this can go up to 98 amps, but straight away it's coming up with a warning. So Torp have obviously put that warning on there for a reason. I'm going to listen to it. It says we recommend limiting the current to below 50 amps. So I always do keep mine below 50 amps. I'll be honest with you, I've never really put it, I've never tested it above. So I guess just for YouTube in this video, let's go to 60 amps. Still giving me the warning, but all in the name for YouTube. So this is just going to mess around with my top end. So we've still got crazy amounts of torque. Yeah, we're 53, 54 mile an hour. It is crazy fast. So with the few minor modifications that I've done to my bike before having the torque controller, I could reach around 46 mile an hour. So we're nearly 10 mile an hour more on the top end and it is a huge noticeable difference. And I'll be completely honest with you, there's not many places that I can travel 50 mile an hour. If I'm on a group ride, you're generally cruising around 20. If I'm out doing jumps, you're never really again above 20 mile an hour. So for me, you've got more speed then than you'd ever need. Unless you're racing one of these and you need it to go that fast on the top end, then you'll never really need to go that high. I generally keep mine around 40. And still that gives me a top end of around 51 mile an hour, which is ample for me. So I'm just gonna move this back down to 40. And for me, these are all the settings that I like to keep for my sport mode. As I scroll down here, I'm gonna go into the throttle settings. Now, again, for my sport mode, this is when I'm out cruising, I know where I'm going. I'm not really worried about battery. Throttle response, I keep to aggressive. And the reason I keep it to aggressive is it's so snappy uh, it just makes popping wheelies really easy. You barely have to pull up on this thing. And if you've got one of these, you know exactly what I'm talking about. To pull a wheelie before, you really had to get the pop, lift the bike up, and then feather that throttle. With this, it's just a case of pinning the throttle and she's straight up. So that is the reason why I keep mine aggressive. Again, this is gonna have a part to play with the battery efficiency. I'll just pull over. We're just going to set this down and we'll go for it. And we'll go for the moment. We'll go sort of halfway. I've still got plenty of snap there. You can see that sort of motion you go through. There's a little bit of lag there. So pulling a wheelie, the wheel's coming down quite far for me to get it back up, up, up and down. When it's aggressive, it's so snappy. I can just keep it there. It's a lot, lot easier much harder to wheelie and you can hear that the motor's output goes on for a bit longer for me to be able to keep that wheel up whereas when it's on aggressive it, it's so snappy i can just teeter around the, the balance point very easily again what i'll do is i'll drop this right down to low so we'll try the wheelie yeah again when the wheel starts coming down you have to be ever so quick and this is almost very similar to when i had the pedal kit on there there's a bit of lag in there, so you have to be a lot quicker on the throttle to keep that wheel up. So next option is my throttle curve. Now, to be honest with you, in the middle is exactly where I like it. I've ridden the bike like this the whole time I've had this controller, and it's just where I'm comfortable. I know when the throttle is going to kick in, and I know how aggressive and how powerful it's going to be, and I know what I'm getting on my top end. What I'm going to do now is switch into eco mode. So going back in reverse order, I still like it to be aggressive, I still like knowing that I've got the snap there. 
Same with my throttle curve, there's no real need for me. In this mode, I'm trying to get somewhere and conserve as much battery as possible. There's, there's absolutely no need for me to be messing around with the throttle curve. So going through my eco mode settings, this is if I'm looking to get somewhere. So I've got a bit of distance to travel. I'm not worried about performance. I just need to get somewhere. So my estimated power is 3.7 kilowatts, which is still very, very respectable, but it's just how that's delivered to the bike. So my motor current, I run around 150 amps. I don't need loads and loads of acceleration, but I need enough just to propel myself when it's needed. Same with my battery current. I don't want to put these down as low as possible. I still want to get there and I still want to get there in good time. So I've tinkered around with all of these settings over the last couple of months and I found running at 60 amps for my battery current is that nice little sweet spot. My RPM is set to give me about 26 mile an hour. Again, I think this is a really nice cruising speed. It's controllable. And again, this is not going to rinse your battery half as quick as having it in the sport mode. And this is the thing I really love about Torp and about this controller. It's even if you have no idea what any of these settings do, like I didn't when I first got the controller, the app lays everything out for you. So it's very obvious that running at 3.7 kilowatts, because those parameters are down, you know you're not going to get a huge amount of performance out of the bike. Changing the RPM, I can see that I'm only going to get 26 mile an hour for top end. So it actually puts it into things that people riding these bikes are going to understand rather than just numbers on a screen but yeah to me if you are looking to save some battery you're not worried about the performance these are the, my go-to settings this is obviously going to be slightly different on other people's bikes depending on the sprocket and the wheel setup that you've got but i find this just about right so there we are then guys they are all my settings to get the best out of your torque controller but anyway guys i'm going to finish the video there as always, thank you ever so much for watching. And if you've liked this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and just gives me a better understanding of the sorts of videos you like to watch. If you'd also consider subscribing as well, that'd be great. But yeah, thanks guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.